I'm glad you're here today, and let's get started with the news from the State Library. And there has been some news. The biggest news is we have a new secretary of the Department of Cultural Resources. Her name is Susan Klutz, and she is a longtime former mayor of Salisbury and is actually good for the public library director um, in Rowan County, Jeff Hall. Um, she is uh, the lone Democrat on the um, cabinet and has jumped right in with both feet. I've already met with her several times and she is a big supporter of libraries and I think will be a great advocate um, for all of us. The new chief deputy secretary is Karen Cochran, uh, a former businesswoman from Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. She's got a great background as well, and um, I had met with her earlier this week to give her an orientation to the State Library, and she seemed very impressed. So I feel very comfortable uh, with our leadership here, and I think that um, they will do a good job for libraries. I hope that... Uh, LSTA, well the big news for Library Services and Technology Act grants is that the deadline is looming, February 28th. That's when all of the applications are due. Uh, there's a little more LSTA news later on in the webinar. Um, we're doing some training, but I figured it's always good to remind people about important dates for deadlines, and there's your reminder for LSTA grant applications. Uh, personnel, we have some changes in personnel here at the State Library. We have hired the new Public Library Management Consultant. You may recall this was the job that was, was held by Laura O'Donohue when she moved up to be Assistant State Librarian. We had an opening and we've hired Molly Westmoreland, who is currently the director at Appalachian Regional. We're very happy to have her on board and she'll be starting March 15th. We've had an internal promotion in the digital project downstairs in the Government and Heritage Library. Michelle Underhill is the director of the Digital Information Management Program. place to work, so uh, if you know anybody that's interested in genealogy, send them our way. And I just happened to be talking to a colleague at Appalachian, and she wanted me to get the word out that Mary Reichel is stepping down as library director at Appalachian, and she's not resigning. She'll still be around or on sabbatical, but they will be looking for a new library or dean of libraries at Appalachian. Uh, through February, so there is still time to apply if anyone is interested or if you know somebody who might be interested. I'm going to move on now to the Government and Heritage Library, and this is the library portion of the State Library. As you know, NCpedia is our online encyclopedia, and it is growing by leaps and bounds, both in content and starting on the Dictionary of North Carolina Biography. So this will be a very rich resource when it's it's a heavily used um, resource for school children. It's the go-to place for for state symbols and other state information. So if you work with students taking the North Carolina curriculum, this is something you need to know about and to tell them about. And there's the URL right there, ncpedia.org. I just thought it would be fun to share this little fact about from NCpedia. Apparently, the very first miniature golf course in the United States was
pretty lush compared to the miniature golf courses I've been to down on the coast. But that's kind of a fun article and one that might be interesting to you or to your patrons. answer any questions you might have about NCPedia. And now I'm going to tell you about an exciting new project that has just come to fruition and that is NC Echo. Now I know NC Echo this new single search box for local history collections. This is almost like a federated search over numerous collections from various organizations around the state, including East Carolina, Johnson C. Smith University, New Hanover County Public Library, of course, the archives here at the um, in Raleigh, as well as state library resources, and more. So when you search using this box, you search across all of those collections. And it is um, selected materials from those collections, but it's definitely worth going and taking a look. There's the URL, ncecho.org. This is an unprecedented, this is, if you've been following the Digital Public Library of America, it's like our own little Digital Public Library of North Carolina. And uh, I encourage you to go and take a look at it. It is, as you can see, a collaboration of several partners, the Digital Heritage Center at UNC Chapel Hill, NC Live, and the State Library. So go take a gander at that, and I hope you enjoy. OK, I'm moving on now to show you actually what the page looks like. Um, so here's the site for NC Echo. You can see that you can search. You can search by county, and you can just enter your single search terms. So there you go, NC Echo. It's pretty cool. Just go check it out. Uh, moving on to news from more news from the Government and Heritage Library. They're doing free genealogy workshops right here in Raleigh, and these are being very um, popular. I'm telling you that uh, our genealogy librarian, Kate Tillotson, make any promises, but I know that she does what she can to get the word out about genealogy around the state. Um, the archives and the State Library are very involved in celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. So we've got a special topic guide and the URL for that is there. Once again, Michelle is the person to talk to if you want more information about any of this stuff. If you're scribbling madly, these URLs down. Don't worry about it because we are going to post these slides on the State Library website and you'll be able to go back and uh, find them there. So don't worry. You can also ask for, um, for one of us to repost them in the chat box if that would help as well. So just send us a message and we'll do it. Moving on to the Library for the Blind and the Physically Handicapped. This is our library that serves anyone who has trouble seeing or holding a book. And they've got a new monthly program, and I love the title. It's called Heard Any Good Books Lately? Um, this is, uh, the cost of this program is underwritten by their friends group. They have a very uh, large and active friends group. Um, they are streaming this um, program live on the third Tuesday of the month, and you can listen in even if you have full sight. So I encourage you to share this information with any of your visually impaired patrons. And as always, we depend, the Library for the Blind depends on um, your referrals to your patrons. Many, many of their patrons are lifelong readers who develop macular degeneration or some other visual impairment. and 
they're going through withdrawal because they can't be without their books. And those are the perfect people to refer to this site. Um, Michelle asked, does the Library for the Blind offer any references with your um, patrons who can't travel to a library? I, I'd say 99% plus of their business is done um, via the e via the mail system. Um, their readers' advisors take calls from their patrons and they negotiate what that patron would like to read next. They get that uh, packaged up and sent out right to that patron's um, home mailbox. It's a really nice service. So you can contact Carl Keen, Keen Michelle, if you want more information and um, see if he can help. I don't know if they could answer regular business reference questions. Um, I, I, I don't think that's uh, what they do. They're hooking people up with something to read. Okay, I'm moving on now to library development and what's happening there? Well, it's looming, folks. Summer reading, it's coming, whether we like it or not. Um, here's where the uh, summer reading workshops will be held this year. It's a day-long workshop for you services staff to get them all pumped up and ready for summer reading. You can see the location, Silva, Durham, Lincoln. These workshops, so perhaps someone from your library might be involved. It's a great opportunity for both the presenters and the attendees. Laurie Special, our Youth Services Consultant, wanted me to let you know that the second edition of Every Child Ready to Read is out. This is um, providing new curriculum and materials to parents and caregivers to help them develop early literacy in their children age birth to five, from birth to age five. So this is getting children ready to go to school and learn how to read. It's a great program. A reminder about the very active NC Kids listserv, and if you want to join or anyone in your library would like to join, there's the information for that. This DCR Educational Resource Portal, this is really cool, and I wish I could show it to you, but it's not quite ready for prime time. This is a all across the Department of Cultural Resources effort. The symphonies involved, Museum of History, Archives, State Library, you name it. This is a portal that will allow teachers to search materials from across the department to use uh, in their classrooms. And this is especially useful with the new Common Core standards. They can search by any number of um, categories. So they could search by grade, by time period in history, they can search by what kind of resource they're looking for. Is it a lesson plan? Is it ideas about um, tours or trips that they could take to historic sites? Various different things. Keyword searching. This will be um, coming in April and it's going to be debuted at, um, I think it's a social studies conference coming up in Greensboro. But at any rate, I will definitely be talking about this in the next webinar, and we will be getting the word out widely about that. Um, if you have any information about any of the children's um, items that I've just mentioned, contact Lori Special, our youth services consultant. She'll be glad to fill you in. I'm moving kind of fast. If anybody has questions, um, just Put them in the chat box and I'll do what I can to answer them. I'm moving on to NC Cardinal and isn't this a cool little map? Um, this map shows what Cardinal is growing to look like. So let me go to the next slide and give you some details. The new libraries that are scheduled to join Cardinal, well we've just had Caswell Public and Wayne County Public to join already this year. Um, so coming up in 2013, the next libraries to join will be Caldwell, McDowell, 
and Forsyth counties. And we're, we're just going to take them in line and, and get them in there as fast as we can. You know, I didn't mention, for those of you who don't know, Car NC Cardinal is a consortium of public libraries that are sharing their resources through a single online catalog. Um, there's many wrinkles to this project. It's been a real learning, uh, a learning opportunity for staff at the State Library, but we think it's going well. Uh, we had a new version of the software that was released in December. And it does make the OPEC look better. I think it does. It looks more professional. It's a cleaner, crisper look. There's a new children's OPEC. We've got some back-end um, functionality, acquisitions module, credit card processing, SMS text notifications. So it's getting better uh, all the time. And um, we're always trying to make it better. So. What's coming up next for Cardinal? Resource sharing. We're going to turn this on across all 16 library collections. So this means that if you're a Cardinal user in Buncombe County and you log on to the catalog, you can see what um, all the other Cardinal libraries have in their collections. Of course, this is going to lead to resource sharing across the Cardinal libraries. I sat in a phone call just earlier this week to hammer out some of the wrinkles of a system like this, and it's amazing what all you have to think about. I'm, I'm in awe of Tanya Procrim and um, all the directors and staff who took part in that call. Uh, I think it's going to be really neat. and. Um, of course, hard on the heels of that, we want to look at a delivery system because uh, if I see something I want to borrow that's in Buncombe County, I don't necessarily want to get in the car and drive out there, but if somebody will deliver it to my home library, well, that would be pretty cool. Uh, the project manager for Cardinal is Tanya Procrim, and you can contact her here at the State Library if you'd like to get more information about Cardinal. We also have information on our website about it, and um, it's growing every day. Thank you, Jeffrey. I see you're putting all those um, URLs out there. That's very helpful. Okay, library development. Well, we're getting back into continuing education in a big way, and I have to say we are really happy to be able to do so. Um, LSTA funding for the last five years was not eligible. We couldn't spend it on continuing education um, of any kind. We, we had to be very targeted. It had to be technology related. With the new five-year plan and the new guidelines from the Institute of Museum and Library Services in Washington, we can once again use our LSTA allotment to support CE, and that is why you're NC Live Basics full day workshops, and this is um, get to know NC Live, renew what you used to know about NC Live. These are being offered all over the state. The Fayetteville workshop is nearly full, only two seats are left there. Registration is still open for the NC Live workshops in Burlington, Henderson, Murfreesboro, North Wilkesboro, Rocky Mount and Wilson and Elizabeth City. All of this information can be found on the train station. We'll talk about that in just a minute. We did offer on-demand training, and those have all been booked. So that is where you can request that an NC Live workshop come to your location, and you will help us drum up attendance. Um, so. Unfortunately, those have all been snapped up by libraries already. We do want to thank our host libraries who are helping us put these workshops on. Um, it, many public libraries have stepped forward, but also we have heard we're hosting them at Vance Granville Community College, Chowan University, 
and the FSU Community Computing and Learning Center in Fayetteville. I love to see this kind of collaboration and working together. So thanks to all of you who are helping us get these workshops out there where people need them. We're already starting to get some pretty good feedback. I thought I'd just share a couple of comments with you that we've gotten from um, the NC Live workshops we've already offered. Um, the trainer was wonderful, great pace, and she was very approachable. I was happy with the presenter and her collaborative approach. Um, group activities to a game of obvious that these workshops are not that way. Uh, the last comment, the practice activities were helpful. Thank you for helping me do my job better. So if you need uh, to brush up on NC Live, I encourage you to attend one of these workshops. We're also offering um, Getting Started with LibGuides. We are adding five additional sessions this spring. This is the same workshop that we offered in the summer when we brought up LibGuides. It's hands-on, so it's perfect for anyone who wants to learn about LibGuides, and you could actually come away with a site for your library already started. Registration for these workshops is open now. We've got one in Hickory, one in Elizabeth City. Both of those are in March. We'll be offering one at High Point Public Library, Durham Public Library in Kinston, and those are all in April. And I've got the dates for these, y'all. I'm just trying to spare you um, having to sit through me going through all the dates. I will tell you how to get this information on the next slide. The customer service workshops by Cheryl Gould, these were very popular the last time we offered these. They're a full day workshop by this professional trainer from California, Cheryl Gould. Scheduling is in the works, and we will have details coming out later this month. The registration information will be shared via CE Info, our CE listserv, and other state library lists, including the PLDA listserv. Collaboration. Well, as you know, I'm sure you all remember that our new five-year LSTA plan emphasizes collaboration and partnership. In fact, it is uh, one of our four major goal areas. So in order to help people think about collaboration in new ways and maybe come up with some ideas for local level collaborations, we thought we'd schedule some workshops across the state to support you in developing and improving the partnerships and collaborations that you engage in with both library and non-library groups. Um, these courses have just been announced today. I think an email went out. Um, on March 25th, there will be one in Cumberland County Public Library in Fayetteville. On March 27th in, at Gatesville in the Albemarle Regional System. May 3rd in Asheville, Asheville Buncombe. And May 10th would dovetail nicely with Governor McCrory's initiative. He is definitely encouraging more partnerships, more working across uh, departmental lines and state government as well. So I've been promising, now I'm going to tell you, how do you keep up with all this stuff? Well, the best way is the train station. And this is a LibGuide that is maintained by the State Library, and it contains information about all sorts of learning opportunities. 68 have been posted in January, and many of those are free of charge. They cover a wide range of topics, reference, copyright, young people, outreach, accessibility, and they also include all of the workshops that we're offering but also some from other organizations. There were over 2,500 views of the train station in January, so I think it's proving to be pretty useful to you all. If you have any ideas for improving it, let us know. We also have a new continuing education listserv called CE Info. 
It already has 125 members and it's open to anyone who would like to subscribe. The list is a place to share information about what you need, what you're offering, and any issues that you're experiencing related to continuing education. So if you're there's a collaboration for you. All of this information about continuing education is provided by Kelly Brannock, our consultant for CE, and if you need any more information, just contact her. And thanks, Dale, for that comment. I didn't get to hear Cheryl at the Leadership Institute, but I did hear that she was really great and everyone really appreciated what she had to say there. So um, she's very popular. Okay, I'm moving on now away from CE but to other library development topics. The Center for the Book. I'm sure you all have heard about Letters About Literature. This is a national competition where students write letters to an author, and that doesn't even have to be a live author, it can be a dead author, from any genre, and they talk about how that author's work has um, influenced themselves, the students. Um, these come to Raleigh from all across the state, and we have some judges that help us select the best ones. And this year, we're partnering with members of NCLA's Youth Services section and the School Library Media Association here in the state to help judge the NC entries. So that's kind of cool. Then the state winners go up to the national level, and there are national winners that are um, selected. The state winners will be selected about mid-March, and the notification will come soon after that, and the national winners are selected in April. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, talk to Kelly. Let's talk about it. Wow, we've been overwhelmed. A lot of people are doing well, let's talk about it this year. This is um, uh, adult discussion groups around uh, a topic. The State Library will provide the materials, the multiple copies of the same book for attendees to read. The National Humanities Council is our partner on this, and they provide scholars to come and um, lead some of the sessions. This is all at no cost. So it's a very popular program. I, I believe what I've heard is we got more people doing it this spring than ever before, which is great. So it's sort of a free, easy, pre- designed adult program that is available to public libraries around the state. If you go to the Huma NC Humanities Council, I, some of them are, you know, there's one called Mad Women in the Attic. Uh, there was an, uh, one I attended years ago was about the home front during World War II. It's just really interesting. So while it's a little late, it's too late to schedule one for this spring. We've got openings for the fall, so um, feel free to go to the Humanities site and research that if you're interested in that. The Gilbert Chapel Distinguished Poet Series is offered by the NC Poetry Society and sponsored in partnership with the Center for the Book. And it's a poetry competition to help foster the writing and reading and enjoyment of poetry across the state. It's kind of cool. Three distinguished poets from the East, the West, and the Central Piedmont uh, mentor a selected student. And the student can be any age from middle school to college. And this even includes homeschool students, too, within their respective regions. Each distinguished poet will present a reading, and each student will also present a local reading at the local library. The poetry readings by the distinguished poets uh, for this round are, uh, well, Richard Chess, uh, the, the poets are Richard Chess, Ann Deegan, and Michael White. And the poetry readings will be held at Barton College in Wilson, St. Andrews Presbyterian College in, in Laurenburg, and Western Carolina and Cullowhee. And the student readings, the student poetry readings will be held at their local public libraries. And that will be 
they will be scheduled for later in the spring. More information about that is uh, available at www.ncpoetrysociety.org. Still with me? Ready to move on? I'm getting ready to move to some new initiatives that the State Library is undertaking, as if this stuff isn't enough. Thanks, Lynn. So let's talk about what's coming up. One new initiative that's being run by Joyce Chapman, our consultant for, mm, I forget her title, she crunches numbers is um, a statistics program. And we formed a volunteer working group of public library directors to make recommendations about the data that we collect. Now, a lot of the data that we collect is dictated by others up the chain. So, oh, thank you, Joyce, consultant for communications and data analysis. All I know is that she's great at what she does. Um, so this statistics group is going to advise us about what statistics we need to be collecting because sometimes things, new things happen. Technology is taking place all around her and are we collecting the right statistics to accurately gauge and be able to report the impact that technology is having on libraries and, and is it are we getting the right information that we need to perhaps be able to be better advocates for libraries and what we're doing today? So this group is going to work over the course of the next several months to review what we're, you know, the statistics that we collect now and make recommendations for new questions. serve about the economic impact and how do we prove that how do we what kind of data can we cite to show our governing agencies and others the value of libraries aside from the little heartwarming stories that is so are we can we track how many people libraries are helping find jobs or apply for um, jobs I'm reading what Lydia wrote reach out to Sean Hogue. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. So I know that Joyce is monitoring all of this, so if you have any ideas or advice for this committee, please share it with us. So um, there may be some new data fields in the annual survey that we want to add, and there may be some data elements that we want to stop, to drop. So we're very interested in hearing from you, and we hope to be able to get the kind of data that's going to be most useful. And if you have, want more information about that, Joyce Chapman, the consultant for communications and data analysis, is the person you should contact. A couple of other new initiatives, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but I'll at least highlight them for you. One is this ebook advisory committee. Frankly, you guys, I've been waiting around for a couple of things to happen, and I have finally come to the conclusion that they ain't going to happen. So instead of waiting around any longer for the perfect solution to come along about ebooks, we're just going to plunge in and see what we can do. So what, what we've done is the State Library is convening an ebook advisory committee. This committee, I don't envy them because they are going to study the current landscape and as you know that is changing on a daily basis and it's quite complicated. So once they get a handle on what's out there, what's possible, what are the barriers, what are the hurdles, all that stuff, we're going to look at other consortial models and even potential models, maybe something that doesn't even exist yet. 
Then the committee is going to be tasked with looking at what the priorities in North Carolina should be around ebooks. And we're not talking just one kind of library. I'm interested in, of course, adult fiction uh, for any library that want, but uh, wants it. But we're also kind of have we have an eye on the school libraries and the new Common Core curriculum and their need for um, nonfiction resources to support that curriculum. All, all of those things together, what's out there, what's possible, what's in the best interests of North Carolina, then I'm going to ask them to make a recommendation. And that's the meaning I think I'm going to be sick that day because I don't, want, I don't want to sway anything and I will be very interested to see what they come up with. And then the State Library will take that. We're going to look at what the recommendation is and see what we can do to uh, get ebooks out there for every library, every public library in the state, and we hope even more libraries than that. That's just getting started. Their initial meeting is uh, on Monday, next Monday, down in Asheboro, where we're going to start studying the current landscape. I'll keep you apprised about that, and um, we'll let you know. I really have no idea how fast these um, two new initiatives are going to uh, operate or how fast they're going to work. The other new initiative is, uh, the title is completely misleading. I'll start off with that. This virtual petting zoo, that's, that's not what we're talking about. That's how this idea was generated in a meeting with um, all the library school deans in the state. And we were sitting around a table having a great conversation and all, you know, getting each other up to date on what's going on. and. It came out that they all have, all these schools have interns, and the library deans were interested in increasing the number of internship opportunities in public libraries specifically. So we started talking, and I was saying, well, you know, we've got these petting zoos at the state library, and about the time we buy the equipment, something else, version 6 has come out, and our equipment's out of date. We're trying to figure out how to handle that. That's how the whole petting zoo idea came up. But in the interim, we've expanded it from interns helping local libraries with petting zoos to maybe looking at all of their digital literacy needs. To either get a handle on or to help their patrons with. And is there any way that these library school interns might be able to help? I'm not, I don't know if there is or not. We're going to be exploring that with this project. With, yeah, with this project. The meetings will all be completely virtual. We have a task force already set up of library school interns and public library staff. Their first meeting will be coming up in early March. And the agenda of that first meeting is, how are you going to find out what's going on in public libraries? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to beg them, let's do not have a survey. Libraries are surveyed to death. So I'm very hopeful that we can find some other way to do a needs assessment of the digital literacy needs in public libraries. So stay tuned for more information about that. I do anticipate on this project that we will have completed the needs assessment and we'll get back together and this will be the deans, the interns, and the public library staff to decide if there can be a step two to this project. One of the, one of the nifty things about it is that attending library school in person, they're taking classes over the internet. And so they can be living anywhere in the state and working with their local library anywhere from Manio to Murphy. So that's what I thought was kind of cool about this, is if we could target interns from some of the more rural areas, uh, this could really be something. So we'll just see.
I'll keep you informed. We're going to learn something as we do it. And um, it may or may not go forward, just depending on how phase one goes. Okay. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. The new library at NC State is open. It's the James B. Hunt Jr. Library. It's on their new millennial campus. They're giving tours, and in fact, well, they're giving tours now for anybody, but I think this is kind of cool. They're having a one-day open house just for librarians. I mean, I'm sure there are going to be other people in the library that day, but this is when you can get sort of a behind-the-scenes tour. You can see the date of the open house. They're going to have refreshments. They have an absolutely incredible shelving system with four robots. They call them book bots, and I'm sure that they will demonstrate that for you. The highlight of my tour was, oh, thank you, Marion, library staff, too. Oh, yeah, any, any librarian. to um, visit. They have 3D printers, and I actually saw one in operation. That was pretty amazing. So it's just a beautiful place. It would be a lot of fun for a, a field trip if you want to get out on the road and block yourself in a car for a while with people, your co-workers, and get to know them better. Come on down on March 6th and tour the library. Anybody that's interested in the makerspace movement or perhaps exploring or establishing a makerspace in their library, I think this uh, open house should be very inspirational for that sort of activity. So there are the questions. No need to RSVP. As Marion, who's on the chat right now, is on staff there and is the one who extended the invitation to me the invitation that I'm extending to you. So if you have any questions, you can chat with her right now and uh, get the scoop. And that is a whirlwind tour of what's new at the State Library. So what questions do you have? What, what have I not touched on that you'd like to know more about? Multiple attendees are tied. I can't tell you what that feels like to see that, y'all. Great news. Okay, that's good. How exciting. It is. It's, it's a really cool library. It's beautiful. Ah, Lydia. You know what? That was in the works. Lydia is asking, might the Master Trainer Program be revived? And we were all set to do that this spring. And then some other things happened budget-wise that made us have to put it on the back burner. I'm very sorry to say. And let me add, while we're on the... That's the training that we were getting those great comments that I shared with you about the interactivity. Obviously, they learned well. So we are very interested in reviving that program. It's not going to happen this year, though. So. Um, I can see it coming back in the future. We just have to we have to shift money around to be able to afford that program again. Thanks for asking, Lydia. And as I recall, you are a master trainer. Is that right? I think you are. Um, Thanks for the new workshops, sure. And let me tell you something in that vein. We're all an original master trainer, wow. We're always interested in feedback about what kind of training you would like. So please, if anybody's got some, you know, a class that they think would be useful, let us know that. Dale, ah, NCLA happening in Winston. I guess I ought to put that in my presentations for the rest of the year, Dale. I will commit to doing that. I will add that slide today, and I will continue to use it between March and October, and we'll get the word out. Stronger together. Oh, here's Kelly weighing in, using our fabulous master trainers to deliver workshops this spring. Ah, so we're going to have, you know, I, Y'all, actually, I am a master trainer, too. So Lydia and I have something in common. 
Oh, great, Dale. Send me the logo. This is kind of fun. And I will make sure I put it on the... up on our website it always is and I, if you may not know I always put up our monthly reports as well the state library monthly reports that we craft for both the secretary for staff for you all for anybody that's interested thanks Jenny thanks Judy uh, I'm so happy that you all attended